Well, some of you got a little bit nervous yesterday when you didn't get your, uh, your Monday devotional, and that's because we're making two big switches in our, in our devotions. Number one, uh, we're moving from three times a week to twice a week, and we're going to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're doing that because on Mondays and Fridays, we're communicating about some other ministries in the church, and on Wednesdays, you always get a letter from Donna sharing what's going on, and so we're going to move to Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the second change is that instead of having our dream team of Donna and Sean and Dr. Rick, uh, they've done a great job, we're thankful for them, but we're gonna introduce you to some new people sharing about some different ministries at Shoreline Church. And so we'll be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. What's gonna stay the same is we'll keep walking through the book of Psalms together, and then we'll introduce some new people with some new ministries that you'll wanna hear about and get engaged in as we continue to move forward as a congregation. So today we're gonna look at Psalm 98. I'm gonna read the whole Psalm, it's not a long Psalm, but just listen to the heart of the psalmist and let this become your heart and your prayer. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel, his people. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of a ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Boy, a lot of lessons in Psalm 98. Here's one that jumps right out at us from the beginning. He is our Savior. Remember your Savior. Cry out to your Savior. If you know Jesus Christ, just every day say, thank you for your salvation. You are my Savior. No one can take that from me. That's locked away and secure in heaven and secure in your heart by faith. And then the psalm says to shout, to burst out, to express yourself. I want to challenge you to worship God with passion. Whether you're alone, whether you're with other people, whether it's listening to a worship song on, 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 on YouTube or on your phone, or whether it's gathering with God's people for worship on campus or online. When you praise God, bring it with passion. Lift your voice and your heart to God. And then the psalm reminds us that creation cries out to God. All of creation praises God. The rivers, the streams clap their hands, the trees lift their arms to God in worship. And I wanna challenge you as, as, as one who is part of this world to join in with creation, to celebrate God's goodness and to give him glory. Will you join me in prayer? God, you are our savior. Through this last few months of our country going through challenging times, of our communities going through difficult times, of sheltering in place and face masks and all the things that we're walking through, God, you're our savior and nothing changes that. We wanna lift our praise to you with passion in our hearts. We wanna join all creation and give you glory. So God, we give you our praise today. We pray that we would sing and celebrate and glorify you in all that we do and that you will be lifted up and praised in the lives and the hearts and the voices of your people. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I'm gonna to hand you off to pastors David and Tom and they want to talk about what it looks like to be a good neighbor. This is a great time to be a good neighbor, so listen closely. I'm Pastor Tom, and ever since, like you, I've been sheltered in place, I've wondered, it must be a great time to reach out to the neighbors around me. They're all home. But at the very first, people seemed very reserved, maybe inhibited, a little bit afraid. And I don't know about you, but my outreach efforts seemed to fall kind of flat until my wife had the idea that, well, I can't really at this point bake anything and give homemade things away. What if we bought every one of our neighbors a take-home pizza? Well, we did exactly that. And I want to say, we have grown relationally because of that one event more in the last three weeks than I think we have in the eight years I've lived here. And my neighbors are already working with me to plan next steps. So here's the question I have for you. What if every shoreliner went out this week and found a way, their own natural way, to be the good neighbor? Outreach to our neighbors can be as simple as a text or a conversation at their door. And who knows, checking in during this time could potentially develop into a lifelong friendship. 
God has placed you in the location that he wants you for the time that you are there. Over the next six weeks, I want to encourage you to do these six simple steps to build neighborhood outreach with your neighbors. Step one, think about who your neighbors are. In step two, you're gonna meet your neighbors. Step three is all about acts of kindness. Step four is where we make a connection with our neighbors in a new way. Step five is where we hope to have spiritual conversations with your neighbors. And finally, in step six, we reevaluate our friendship so far, and we think of new ways to continue to be a good neighbor. So here's my guarantee. If you follow these six steps, you will make a positive impact in your neighborhood. For more information, check us out online.